Good morning, John. So when you got a friend or a family member who is sick, it is normal and good to want to do something for those people. And you should. And as I have become one of the people who people want to do things for, I have thoughts on how to do that well. What to do and what to avoid. And also because I am just one person, I asked on Twitter and I got a lot of people, thousands of people who responded to me to tell me what they've really appreciated and what they haven't. With of course the caveat that different people are different and they're gonna want different things. Like I got people saying that they both appreciated and didn't appreciate the same thing. But here's one thing that I think you should avoid. Asking what you can do. I know it's very tempting, but it almost feels I don't know, this isn't it, but it almost feels like you're saying that so you can get out of actually doing something because I'm not gonna ask for something from you because that's not how most people do. Also, being sick is a lot of work. It's a lot of burden already. It's a lot of stress. And now I'm trying to think of things that you can do? I, that's more work! What you can and should do is think of what you can do and then ask if that's a good thing. Like, what do you need from me? Feels like a burden. But what kind of Pringles are your favorite? That feels like a gift. Now what people need is gonna be very different person to person. Like sometimes people are gonna be in like a financially difficult spot. And in those situations, getting like an expensive gift can actually feel bad because I don't need an expensive gift right now. I need like gasoline to get to my doctor's appointment. And so somewhat surprisingly, the number one most appreciated thing I heard about on Twitter was meal delivery gift cards. People also talked about gas cards, rides, and just meals, like delivered meals that people made for them. But things to avoid when it comes to making meals for people include not asking what they would like. It's good to ask and be like, would this be good? Uh, because people like different things and also they might have restrictions both in general, but also because of their illness. Also, this is going to be context dependent, but cleaning up a casserole dish or Tupperware is work that some people might not be able to do right now. I have appreciated it when it comes in a disposable container. Well, nobody likes disposable containers, but in this situation, even if you don't want it back, like I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to clean it and I'm going to be exhausted afterwards. These little aluminum pans are amazing and they sell them at the grocery store. Now, when it comes to more gifty type stuff, obviously you're going to know your person better than I do. Do, but for me, the things that I have appreciated most are things that imply in their giving that I should be focusing on myself and healing and resting. So yes, blankets, pillows, but also smaller things like bath bombs or soap or tea or lotion. Somebody gave me oil from my bald head. Here's my bald head, by the way. I mean, I have a fine head shape, it turns out. Like, it's a good head shape. I just have always had hair. I I liked it. Flowers are also nice, but what I will say is I had a lot of flowers in the first week. Uh, and so if you want to give flowers, here's what maybe you should do is schedule on your phone like two months later or three months after you hear about it and then send flowers that. Also, there are some flowers and I didn't know this, but there are some flowers that are like morning flowers. Don't give white lilies to a person who is sick. It's basically saying like, I'm thinking about your funeral. Now you also might know that your person loves something in particular, like Turkish Delight or Pringles. But when it comes to something that somebody might feel bad ignoring for a while or throwing away, you do want to ask because being sick can change your relationship with food. It can mean that there are periods of time where you can't enjoy food or certain foods that you're not allowed to eat. So always good to ask. But I was really quite shocked by what I heard the most when it came to what people want from other folks when they are sick. And not because I hadn't experienced it. I had experienced the exact same feelings, but I thought I'm a weirdo. But no, by far the most requested thing, the thing that people appreciated the most from other people was the people. It was just, it was just like hanging out. Like we want to hang out. Being sick can of course be very stressful. Sometimes it can be very time consuming. Other times it can be super boring and isolated. There is often not a lot to do. And sometimes I both am bored and do not want to hang out. Like I feel awful and I just want to lay around. But sometimes I feel good and I want a phone call. I want to talk, I want to do something. Not like a hike. Unfortunately, I, I hope I get there, but not a hike, but like I do want to hang. Now, one of my favorite things is that you can do some of this stuff together. Like you can sort of contrive to be in your friend or loved one's neighborhood if they live in your town. And then you can be like, hey, I'm at X coffee shop near your house. 
can I get you anything? I'd love to come by and hang out. And you're not dropping in unannounced. That, avoid that. Because look, they might be like currently puking. Like you don't want to knock on a door of a person and you don't know if they would like to see you come by right now. They might be busy. But saying like, hey, I'm at the taco shop. Can I bring you a quesadilla? And then also letting yourself be a part of the package if they'd like it is lovely. And like, this is a wonderful thing to do for a person who doesn't have an illness. But even better for someone who might be craving a little bit of socialization and a lot of cheese. People said over and over again, they don't want surprise drop-ins, but they do want visits from people, whether that's on the phone, at the hospital, or at home. And they also said that as their illness progressed, these check-ins and hangouts tend to get further spaced out and less common. And so with all of this stuff, I think it's important to say like in the week that everybody's hearing about the illness for the first time, there's gonna be probably plenty of folks reaching out and, and offering support. But two months in, six months, six years in, there's a lot less of that. And so schedule that. I am like this, and I, th I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I consider everything in my life to be a project, including like my relationship with my son and my wife and my brother. Like, I, like all of these things are things that I need to work on, to invest in, to spend time on, and to schedule. Friendships don't happen if they don't get invested in. So put it on the calendar. Do it every two weeks. Have a thing that says, send this person funny TikToks, or ask them if they want a phone call, or tell them that you want to bring them a coffee. And as for things to avoid when it comes to this stuff, unless you've been through something pretty similar, I would avoid advice. Now, people who have had Hodgkin's lymphoma and they've been through ABVD, which is my chemo regimen, I want to talk to them about their advice all day and night. Because it's like, suck on ice chips during the bleomycin. Like, you're not going to know that tip unless you've been through it. Talking to people who have been through a cancer diagnosis and treatment and, you know, recovery and relapse and all the different things that can happen with cancer has been great. It's been very helpful. People who haven't been through it, I just like, I don't know that your advice matters that much to me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. When I hear from a person who's had my chemo regimen and they say, you know, weed helped me a lot with the nausea. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. That's, that's interesting to know. When I hear that from somebody who just smokes weed a lot, I don't care. And one of the scariest things about being sick is thinking that you might not be doing the right thing for your health. It's so scary. And it's it's impossible to know, 100%, of course. But this is very hard not to obsess over. And hearing from people that you might love or trust that you should be doing or trying something else should be done very carefully. And also, it should never be done with the intent to sway someone away from a treatment plan that they have developed with their doctor. And it feels really bad, and I think also is bad, to get a person into a place where they might be questioning their current treatment plan that they have worked out with a person who knows more about this than you, and that's why they're the doctor of oncology or whatever. And that was a lot of words for something that you're probably not going to do anyway. Like, I just wanted to say it just in case, but it is a thing to avoid. What people mostly want is like the same stuff. They want to make jokes about their kids. They want to relive all the grad school fun. They want to talk about submarine disasters. And they want to hear what's up with you. Like, it's just normal socialization. It can always feel weird when you are socializing with a person who is in a different situation. Than you. I promise it will get normal immediately once you start to do it. Yeah, that person's in a different situation than you might be used to, but it's just a person. You do not have to treat them like they're a delicate flower. You should not treat them like you're already mourning their loss. You can, but you don't have to talk about their illness and treatment. Like they will talk about that the amount that they want to, and sometimes they'll want to, and sometimes they won't. Trust me, I love to complain about being sick. And I would love for you to let me do that. And honestly, just remember one of the great joys of life is hanging out with friends. And this is just an excuse to hang out with a friend. So just hang out with a friend because you're here at this video because you want to help somebody out. This is why you clicked on this, right? And I'm telling you, once you've had your basic needs fulfilled, what people need more than anything else, regardless of their health, is people. John, I'll see you on Tuesday.